Okay, so in this video, we are going to discuss the free response question 1 from the 2020, the year in which COVID-19 occurred. Now, the guys who are watching this way after 2020, you would learn a lot of things. It was not an easy FRQ. There were many tricky questions and we'll just go through them, all of them. So, starting with part A. This is the free response question one. So the free response question one part A asks us, identify the hybridization of the valence orbitals of the carbon atom indicated with arrow in the compound Y. So in compound Y, as we can see here, this has four sigma bonds. Now I would tell you there's a thing called steric number, which is sigma bonds plus the lone pairs on the particular atom. Now the question asked us about carbon. So we can see it has four sigma bonds and no lone pairs because it has bonded with all of them. So the steric number is four here. Now what this steric number tells us is the hybridization. So if we look at sp3, it has four orbitals, one s and three p which correlates with four sigma bonds and we can write here that the con the hybridization of this particular carbon here is sp3 moving on to part two it asked us the intermolecular forces that the two compounds have in common now this was a really tricky question now let me explain you why so let me just erase this first. Oh. I think I cannot erase it. No problem. No problem. Alrighty. So the intermolecular forces in compound W is hydrogen bonding. As this bond forms kind of hydrogen bond. But when another similar kind of compound W will come by here. They will form hydrogen bonding. So we have hydrogen bonding here and as you can see we have LDF, LDF is a must for all these hydrocarbons and dipole-dipole forces because we do not know if which side is pulled, uh, which side is pulling this compound. I mean nitrogen is definitely a more electronegative com uh, element so I'll just write dipole-dipole. Now the trick comes here. Look at this compound Y. Compound Y has oxygen and hydrogen present, but they do not form hydrogen bonds. Now, let me just repeat it. They do not form hydrogen bonds. So what they form is just dipole dipole and interactions and LDFs, which, uh, which I just told you the part B. So the solution to part B is dipole-dipole and LDFs. All right, moving to part C now. And part C was a bit of trick as well. L let me just show you what part C is asking us. It asked us what, uh, no, no, no. Compound W has a greater boiling point than compound Y. The student claims that the difference is because compu compound Y exhibits stronger hydrogen bonding than compound W. Do you agree or disagree with this claim? Justify your answer in terms of all types of relative strengths of intermolecular forces present in each substance. Now, look at this thing. I disagree with the statement. The reason being, Y does not exhibit hydrogen bonding. It has zero H bonding. Remember I told you, it has not got anything pertained to oxygen, nitrogen, fluorine, bonding with hydrogen so the justification will be w has a greater boiling point due to presence of hydrogen bonding in w which is just a reverse of the statement and uh, it also asks us to f tell the relative types of strength of intermolecular forces now the point is that hydrogen bonding wait a minute Hydrogen bonding is always more stronger than 
dipole dipole so even though y is bigger and has more carbon more electrons the dipole is still weaker than hydrogen bonding here so the compound w we have just justified it has a higher boiling point Alrighty, so this was the kind of first sub part now the second sub part is asking us a different compound w oh sorry x is found to decompose over time to study the reaction a student monitors the molar concentration of the compound x in a solution at a constant temperature after collecting and analyzing the data the following linear graph was created by plotting 1 over x versus time so let me move to the graph here as you can see the 1 over x forms a straight line with the time here now let's move on to the questions part d the student proposes that the reaction is second order with respect to compound x do you agree or disagree justify your answer using the second using the data in the graph above of course i agree with the statement because it is a second order reaction we can use the equations given to us in the in the in the equation sheet and it says 1 upon x minus 1 upon x initial is just k times t where x is the concentration of compound x you can say x is the concentration now we clearly see a linear equation linear function forming here with time and this this function here is definitely a second order reaction so it is a second order reaction okay now this part e asks us to write the rate law for the decomposition of compound x that is consistent with the graph above rate law for a second order reaction is k and x squared because it is a second order reaction it's it's a squared with respect to power of x concentration of x now to determine the rate constant okay determine the value of rate constant for the reaction include units with your answer we'll go we'll move back to the graph here and the graph is tricking us in a way look the units given to us are days now some of you might write seconds or maybe minutes there but the actual thing was days now putting this into our equation so 1 upon xt minus 1 upon xo is equal to kt and we are supposed to find the value of k so at 25 at 20 seconds it's 25 by using this point so we can write this as 25 and the initial it starts at 5 so subtracting 5 and as we see the k moves from 20 to 0 to 20 so it's k times 20 now as you see k is what is k guys tell me k is 25 minus 5 upon 20 which is 1 1 and now we are supposed to find the units as well so units can be found out by molar upon second is equal to k times concentration squared see i was doing the mistake myself it has to be days not second so let me just replace it by days here and 1m cancels with this so the units of k are k is equal to 1 molar times days and days I'll just put it in red because it can trick you anytime now the last tricky part was G which I'm gonna read the student claims that if experiment were conducted again at a higher temperature the value for rate constant K would decrease do you agree or disagree with the students claim justify your answer by comparing the slopes by comparing what comparing the slopes uh, of the original line above to the slope that would result from higher temperature conditions now let me just tell you that I disagree with the statement the reason being at higher temperature we have got more molecular collisions 
more molecular collisions. So if you're having more collisions with keeping the concentration same, the rate must increase. So K's value has to increase. So the student claim is wrong and we can justify this using the slope at higher temperature conditions. So moving back to our graph here and changing the color. Let me see what color can I use. Let's say purple. Now the slope is identified as K. The reason being Y equals to MX plus C and M is K here with Y x being time and y being the concentration so the value of k is rising which means that the slope is increasing y is increasing with a similar amount of change in x so just signifying it in the in the slope here the slope will be increasing like this and we get the slope to be bigger one which which we have justified using justify your answer